I think in the UK we've got a long way to go in terms of how local authorities and public sector agencies understand equality. The Runnymede Race Equality Scorecard is a new initiative designed to bring crucial performance data off the desks of policy workers and out onto the street. We've collected figures on seven key areas including employment, criminal justice, education and health and published it in an accessible format to make it easier for citizens to find out how well their local government is performing. We need in places like Redbridge to have a better understanding of how communities are changing. Interesting. Ilf is a dump. Multicultural. There's mostly dominated by the Asians and uh, basically uh, we get along and we support each other. I love Ilford. It's not nice. People throw their litter everywhere. It's just horrible. This is my area, but it's not my home. There are tensions within the borough, so where a new communities come in, they'll be perceived as being very foreign, very alien. So in practical terms, what that means for us is that we will be providing services to help communities integrate and help communities to get to know each other a lot better. We wanted to create a tool to help local areas, local authorities, as well as citizens engage in discussions around race equality. We decided to work in three London boroughs, and one of the boroughs was Redbridge, and we wanted to work in an outer London borough. And one of the reasons is that the demographics are changing. It's a very clever idea. It's about actually making equality impact assessments, all the jargon, all the policy around equality more accessible. It can't just be like blind to the fact of what's going on in the streets, isn't it? Like? Giving information to the people is always a valuable thing. Without information, things can't be improved. Information empowers individuals to better themselves and the communities in which they live. So yeah, I think it's a great thing. For Redbridge, the GCSE results are quite telling of the changing demographics in the borough as well. We measured key stage four attainment by the percentage of pupils with five or more A star to C GCSEs. You've got Asian communities doing exceptionally well, with black and other communities possibly doing less well. And what that says overall is that sometimes targeted projects work. When that initiative is finished and you've moved on to another community, that's where you see the drop. And overall, what that means is you need consistent and persistent equality projects to actually improve standards across the board for all communities. Currently, while we're in the recession, there is a huge problem, not only with accessing jobs, but with sustaining jobs that can actually give you a living wage. And that is a huge challenge for BME communities. In Redbridge, we found that the adult claimant count is increasing and consistently twice that of white. This has a knock-on effect as well in terms of health, in terms of education and in terms of housing. If BME communities are 3.5 times more likely to be signing on than other communities and actually their access to housing stock is very different to other communities as well. So it's very much at the core of trying to provoke and enable equality locally. Mental health is a huge area of concern for ethnic minority communities. People are diagnosed as being mentally ill when actually it could be they're not understood and that could be about something as simple as linguistic, about cultural barriers, about communication or it could be an institutional failure as well. Looking at mental health, black admissions are 50% higher than white. Stop and Search is a very interesting dynamic in Redbridge. The suggestion is always in by the Metropolitan Police that actually it's not that big an issue. They are aware, to a large extent, there's public concern about it, but to a large extent, it'll always be justified as saying, proportionally, locally, we're on target. Well, actually, the figures in the scorecard project demonstrate that's far from the truth. They're going to have to work harder, and that can't be good business sense for them. It's like mainly they pick on like black people because, because of their they image. look more they look more rough than what white people look. 
I just don't think it's right how they're treating people like because of their colour of their skin. I think it's wrong, really. We don't want to alienate specific groups of people within the community, so that is a big concern. It's disgusting. I think it's just wrong. In Redbridge, a black individual is more than twice as likely to be stopped and searched than any other ethnicity. The school car project has been quite an interesting process to go through. The council's shown a lot of commitment, and as all the public sector partners have, but actually we need a lot more from them as well. We need them to come actively to the table and we need them to engage in a discussion that may be disturbing at times, but also is very much needed if we're going to actually improve standards. Very, very positive. Mostly in Ford, I found that they are mostly dominated by young people and very hard-working people. We have been working with local councillors to get their response to the data that we found. We're also organising a parliamentary event where we're bringing together all the local MPs, councillors and service providers together to discuss how they can address some of the racial inequalities that we found. The council and all the public sector partners have got to understand that from a business point of view, it's a false economy not to invest in equality.